Okay, this function probably looks familiar to you here, x to the fourth minus 2x squared, because that's exactly the same one that we used in the very first video. Now, what was different about that problem was it gave you a graph, and you got all the same information, increase and decrease in constant mins and maxes. You got all that from the graph itself. Well, now we're going to do this whole problem again, except that we're going to do it all by calculus, which means that we have to take a look at the first derivative, and we're using our first derivative to determine all these intervals. Okay, so the steps that we follow for this, the first step says that we have to find the critical numbers because that's going to set up our separate intervals that we're going to be eventually testing. So in order to do that, we need the first derivative. Okay, so first derivative is going to be uh, using the power rule here. 4 comes down, 4x cubed minus 4x to the first power. So using the power rule, that's your first derivative. Now, in order to find the critical numbers, we can find that two ways. The first way is we look for any place where the first derivative is going to be undefined, but because we have a polynomial, we're not going to have any places where it's undefined anywhere on there. So the next thing we're going to do is set the first derivative equal to zero. That's the other way we can find critical numbers. Now, whenever you have a polynomial that's set equal to zero, what you want to do is factor it. So this one, we can take out a common factor for and we can also take out the smallest power of x, so, we, so 4x is your common factor there. Then that's going to leave us with x squared minus 1 when we factor it. But this part here can be factored one more time, difference of squares. So we're going to do x plus 1, x minus 1. So now this is fully factored. We'll set each individual part equal to 0, and you're going to get 0, negative 1, and 1 as your critical numbers. So that was all the first step. We find critical numbers, we get this. Now step two is where we have to do some test points. So we're going to draw a number line, and we're going to put all of our points on there. We have, we have zero here, negative one, and one. What you want to do is you want to test numbers in between each of these. And all you're, you're doing is you just want to indicate whether you get a plus or a minus. Now, when you, when you pick your test numbers, you're not going to use the original function. You need to use the derivative. Why? Because we need the, the results of this is going to tell us whether it's increasing or decreasing. If the derivative is positive, that means it's increasing. Negative is decreasing. Zero is constant. So we're going to test, put, put test numbers in these intervals, but we're going to put them into, again, you've got to use the derivative function. So I'm going to indicate here my test values. I'm going to circle them. So I'm going to do negative 2. I'm going to test negative, I can use negative 0.5 for this one, 0.5, and I'll use 2. So when I do this, I'm putting the test numbers uh, inside a circle. I'm circling it and then lowering them down this way. Now the reason why I'm doing this is because if you just put the test numbers in here as is, when you write your answers for increase and decreasing, you may grab the wrong number. You might grab a negative 2 instead of a negative 1. Now these numbers I made up. These are numbers, any, any kind of number will work as long as they fit in your uh, given interval. And so uh, any number will work between negative 1 and 0. For instance, I'm using negative 0.5, but technically if you want to use points, negative 0.7 or negative 0.8, that's all going to work as well. Okay, so now what we have to do is put these into the first derivative to get the sign values. Now a graphing calculator is going to make this a lot easier for you. You're not concerned about the actual number itself. You're only concerned about whether you get a positive or negative when you plug negative 2 into here. Of course, the old way of doing it, we just put that into the x's, work it out by hand, and you can do that. But again, if you have a graphing calculator, you can just simply put this in as your y1, put these test points in, and that's going to give you the results. So I'm just going to go ahead and give you what the results are. This is the final sign configuration that you're going to get there. When you put negative 2 into here, you'll get a negative number. So we just indicate a negative and so forth. Now, what does this tell us? This is going to tell us the intervals of increasing and decreasing. Any place where the derivative is positive, that means that the, uh, the slope is positive, and so then we know it's increasing. If it's negative, then we know it's decreasing. So I'm going to go ahead and write my answers for my increasing intervals. I'm just going to indicate the places where I have a plus. That's from negative 1 to 0 and then from 1 to infinity. This is the places that have a plus in it. Now the ones that are negative, that's going to be our decreasing. 
Okay, so decreasing will be, I'll indicate any place I have a minus sign on my interval. Negative infinity to negative one. And then in between here, between zero and one. And again, I'm using my parentheses. Now these are exactly the same answers we got from the graph itself. We pulled the information this time directly from algebra. We didn't have to use any graph at all to get the same results, and this is how you can use calculus. Now what about the local mins and local maxes? Well, let's talk about that a little bit more. I'm going to look at this visually, and then after this I'm going to go ahead and give you the exact uh, rule for that one. But in this case, let's talk about visually what's happening. Negative slope means it's going down, it's, it's going downhill, and then we have it going uphill. So I have a downhill, and then I have an uphill, and I have downhill, I have uphill uh, for each of those. Okay, so we can see kind of visually what's happening based on what's, what, what's happening here. Going down and going up. That means we're going to have a valley. So it means there should be a relative min there at negative 1. We also know there's going to be a relative min at 1 because, again, it's going down and it's going up. So I can indicate my relative or same thing as local. Relative min is going to be at, uh, at negative 1. Now, you do want to indicate these as coordinates. So if you want to get the exact coordinate from this one, you've got to put negative 1 back into the original function to get the actual y value. So if you plug negative 1 back into here for both the x's, you're going to get negative 1. So when you write your answer, you write that as a, a coordinate if it asks for. If it says write your answer as a coordinate, you need both of them. The other one is going to happen at 1. And again, we'll plug 1 back into the original one, and we get negative 1 for that also. So that's going to be your relative min. The last thing we'll do is relative max. Now, the relative max, we're going to look for uphill and then downhill. Uphill and downhill means that's going to occur at 0. Okay, so at 0, that's where it occurs. If we plug 0 back into here for both the x's and the original one, you're also going to get 0. So now we have everything that's asking for, increasing, decreasing, relative min, and relative max. So the results of this down here, uh, let me go ahead and put that on the board for you so you have it officially, how you look for these relative min and the maxes based on the sign chart that you have here. So as a result of that last problem, we had that table up there and we looked at the plus and minus sign changes and we did that visually, but here is formally uh, what the rule is. This is called the first derivative test for local or relative extrema. So if we see on the chart, if you see a change from negative to positive, that means you have a decrease and it's going downhill and uphill. That's indicative that you have a relative or, or local min at your C. If you have a plus and minus, that means it's increasing and then decreasing. Plus or minus will tell you there's a local maximum at C. And then if you don't see a change at all, if it's plus plus or minus minus, we didn't see that with our particular example here, um, but if you had that, that would tell you that your C, it's not anything, it's not a relative max and it's not a relative min. So the question is, well, how can I get a, a derivative of zero, but then not have a change in sign? Well, that's actually going to be a situation where you have something like this. Your cube graph does that. You would have a place right here where it would kind of flatten out and go up, so you'd have, you would have a slope of zero right at that point. But you see it's increasing here and it's increasing again. So that would be a situation where you get a critical number, so something is happening there. However, that's not going to be considered a relative min or a relative max.